let's not kid ourselves, the Pegasus isn't going to be winning that many gold medals anytime soon. Uh, to me, what the Pegasus is, is a workhorse of a sneaker. What a Vapor Fly is, is a gold winning medal sneaker. Uh, and for me, that the, the distinction between the two is huge. One is an absolutely max performance sneaker, and the other one is like your daily grinder, your you know training sneaker, your, you wear the whole thing thin, totally destroy the midsole, take the outsole off completely after miles and miles of running. Whereas the Vapor Fly is like, it's a special one you pull out the box for those special occasions. Uh, and today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be comparing those two a little bit because there is some crossover in two particular places between the Vapor Fly, Vapor Fly and the Pegasus 37s. But specifically what I'm going to be doing today is answering that question that you've already seen in the title of this video, which is why I feel sorry for the Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 37. This is a Tokyo Butter 23 sneaker channel. Tokyo Butter 23 sneaker channel days. My niche up soon, or then my niche me to go inside. Every single day I bring you content from Tokyo, Japan about upcoming sneaker releases, sneaker news, and sneaker reviews. And today, what we're looking at is the upcoming release of the Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 37. I'll be honest, I've reviewed quite a lot of Pegasuses down the few months I've had this channel, well, about 18 months. Uh, I'd say maybe I've reviewed three or four of them. Um, and so I know a fair bit about Pegasuses. Uh, but on the flip side of that, my running days are a little bit in the rear view mirror I have run a few marathons might surprise some people out there I've run five marathons in total but I've always been a larger man if you know what I'm saying um, and uh, and as a larger man what I've always preferred to run in is Nike Air Max uh, and by that what I mean is the Air Max is front to back entire midsole made out of that air unit which protects my ankles and my knees from that pounding that they get as I do my uh, training runs and things like that which I haven't done for a long time largely because of my little girl who's sleeping next door and since she was born well you know exercise has taken a back seat so uh, um, but for me so it's hard for me to sort of look at the Pegasus 37s and the Vaporflies and sort of give you a performance side of things but what I can do is I can give you the technology because I know about the technology that goes into make both and the specific difference between the two and I can also give you the look and I can draw that line that I want to draw between the Vaporfly and the Pegasus 37s because there's a design draw, like there's a line that draws the two designs together and that's where I want to go with this. As far as performance is concerned, I'm just assuming that it's a great shoe. Uh, I'm not going to get it on feet anytime soon. I wear a 12 and a half as well, so uh, it's probably not the ideal sneaker for me to go running in. But like I say, it's a work workhorse. You can't get up to number 37 in the line. Pegasus 37, man, this thing's been around for years uh, and it has been that go to training sneaker for a ton of different people 5k 10k full marathon whatever you're doing it is your workhorse sneaker and here they are they're coming out with this 37th edition right on top of the olympics they're gonna ride that wave into the future the sneaker of the future 2020 forever synonymous with the pegasus 37 except that's not going to happen. Uh, and as I say in my videos, uh, I like to like answer the question right at the start. I don't like to keep the question to the end, as I know some YouTubers like to do to keep you guys hanging on. What's he going to say? What's he going to say? Uh, I prefer to answer the question right at the start. Uh, and the answer is the reason why I feel sorry for the Pegasus 37 is exactly that. It's to do with the Olympics and the fact that the Olympics are supposed to be happening here in a few months' time. And they've been postponed by at least a year maybe more, but at least a year. And what that means is anything that drops this year in terms of athletics, it's going to drop. They're not going to postpone it. There's no way a massive machine like Nike or Adidas for that matter, or ASICS or any of those companies, they're all geared towards like dropping stuff and it's all connected together. Shirts, shorts, shoes, socks, the whole thing, rucksacks, everything's all tied in together and it's like a domino effect or a tapestry. You pull one string on the tapestry and the whole thing falls apart. Uh, and that's what would happen if they stopped these releases, if they said, you know what, no, all of this is lined up for the Olympics uh, and we have to wait till next year to drop these things for the Olympics so let's put Nike on hold for a year not gonna happen and that's kind of why I feel sorry for the Pegasus 37 because mark my words this sneaker will be lost to history
It's going to be, it's gone. Uh, they're going to go from the 36 to the 38. The 38 is going to come out next spring. It's going to be pushed and hiked ahead of the Olympics. Uh, and the 37 is going to be forgotten about. And it should have had a place in history. It should have been that sneaker that led up to the Olympics. You know, people are like, oh, there's a lot of sport going on. You know, I'll get out there and, you know, I should get back to running. You know, what will I, I'll buy those Pegasus 37s. And it becomes that like kind of sneaker that comes around once every four years in time for the Olympics. And so I kind of feel sorry for the 37 uh, because it's going to have it's going to lose its place in history it isn't going to be there with that hype that comes with the olympics every four years and gets people back into their athletics back into running back into exercise and this shoe would have been central to a lot of us out there and i'm saying us because what i'm talking about is the non-elite people the elite people go with the vapor flies um, and let's quickly look at those vapor flies because there's two points on there that i want to draw that line to the pegasus 37s point number one the Vaporfly has a carbon kind of band right in the middle. It's like an S right in the center of the sneaker between uh, the insole and the midsole. You've got like in there this carbon fiber that gives a spring. And the theory is it will reduce your running time by 4%. So if you would run a marathon in say, I don't know, three hours, which is 180 minutes, 1% uh, 1 of 180 minutes is 1.8 minutes times four uh, is something like 6.4 minutes or something. So you're gonna run 6.4 minutes faster because of that carbon spring that you get off the middle of the vapor fly sneaker it's the signature part of the shoe and speaking of the olympics just a few months ago the international olympic committee finally gave it its approval to actually be in the olympics again another sneaker that's actually going to lose its place in history because of this postponement of the olympics because for sure a next year nike will come out with something else and b adidas and asics and people like that will have time to catch up with nike so all those runners that would have been running four percent faster because they're part of the nike brand lost that chance so it's a whole it's a big thing this you know the olympics being delayed uh, but that carbon in the middle there that gives that spring gives that extra four percent totally not there on the pegasus and hopefully what i've done behind me on the green screen here which is at home uh, as i said i don't like to shoot uh, at home i've told people that uh, recently but i have to shoot because we're in lockdown here in tokyo so uh uh, and thankfully the two dogs aren't barking at me yet even though it's their dinner time so but anyway enough about that um is that that, that spring in the middle of the vapor fly there isn't there on the pegasus what's in the pegasus is a front four foot air bubble that used to be more of a full foot thing but they did some research and they realized that really it's on that four foot point where the impact comes and hopefully what i've been able to do is to go from the vapor fly construction diagram to the pegasus 37 construction diagram and you can see that air unit at the front it's really important. Uh, it's important for two reasons. One is because it's much smaller in length than the 36 was, because the 36, it covered much more of the length of the sneaker, whereas they're focusing on the four foot uh, this time. But the second thing is, uh, did I say there were two things? Yeah, because there's three. Uh, the second thing is that it's actually a full centimeter thick instead of half a centimeter th thick, so it's much thicker. But the main point is that in the women's shoe, it comes at 15 PSI, and in the men's shoe, it comes at 20 PSI. For those of you who don't know what PSI means, it's pounds per square inch. And the place where you'd normally see PSI is on a tire of a fairly uh, high-end bicycle, you know, like a road bike or a, a speed bike or a racing bike. Uh, and usually you'd pump the tires on those guys up. And if you know what I'm talking about, you pump them up pretty hard to 100 PSI. Uh, but what they found out is that women, um, I think, I'm not sure if it's their preference or if it's actually like biologically, scientifically better to run at 15 psi i don't know if it's a preference or science and then men that bubble on there is actually at 20 psi so it's got a little bit more hardness in it um, and a bit more air and a bit more pressure in it so it's a, a bit more of a harder um, bubble or air unit you know, on the front there interesting personally i don't like it uh, the reason I don't like it is I don't like generalizations. I don't like saying all women run at 15 PSI, all men run at 20 PSI. I'm sure some guys would prefer the 15 and some women would prefer the 20. Um, and I think instead of saying it's a man-woman thing, it would be better just to say, hey, look, you can get this in 15 or 20. You choose. 
you know what I mean? Instead of it being a man-woman thing. But um, but the fact that they're actually like tailoring that unit on there and you can choose which one you want. Now, I, I don't think you can do that. Um, like, you can't pick up the shoe and say, oh, this has a 20 in it. Can you replace it with a 15, please? I don't think you can do it that way. Uh, I think it's like, you know, it's already in there. The unit's already in there and you have to choose the one you want and make sure you get the sort of right uh, pressure in your air unit. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to do, which uh, ties the Vaporfly and then these Pegasus 30, sevens together as I want to look at the um, the lateral side so hopefully you know what, I'll put the vapor fly up first uh, and one of the things that I noticed about the vapor fly is that kind of two-tone midsole where you've got the back half of it kind of going one way and then the front half going the other and hopefully what you can see is right in the middle of the midsole there's a sort of section that splits the two halves and it gives this sort of two-tone effect it's hard to sort of explain but surely I've zoomed in on it here and it's interesting to me that that design element has been brought forward to the Pegasus 37 you can see on the lateral side behind me here that this upcoming release of the Pegasus 37 also has that kind of, it's a sort of like a two-tone fishbone design on the side of the midfoot, uh, on the midsole there. So, uh, and again, it's it's sort of, to me, it's all to do with those Olympics. The vapor flies would have been a massive sneaker at the Olympics had they gone ahead this year. And then of course, designing the, the Pegasus 37s to look a little bit like a vapor fly because they knew, wow, these vapor flies are going to get hundreds of gold medals and uh, making the Pegasus look like a vapor fly is going to push sales uh, so it's all tied together it's all mixed up and together and, and it just sort of to me says I feel sorry for the Pegasus line because I think it's going to fall short at 37 um, either they're going to keep going with it and, and make it sit for way too long into the 2021 Olympics but by then like I said Adidas, Asics, all those other uh, brands out there will have caught up with the design and the technology that Nike had out ready for the Olympics this year, or they'll replace the 37 next year with a 38, and the 37 will be the forgotten sneaker. Uh, but that's my take on uh, this upcoming release. It's a big sneaker, of course. It's an important sneaker. Um, it should be excuse me, it should be respected for what it is, which is the 37th in a long line of great sneakers, and it's still a great sneaker to run in. That's not going to stop being a great sneaker to run in. It just, the story that was going with it has kind of lost a bit of its momentum, uh, and it's lost its narrative, which is kind of sad to see. But still, if you're looking for a sneaker to go do some training runs in, or even as an amateur runner, go run a marathon, and this surely will be a great sneaker for you, especially if you can choose that 20 or 15 PSI on the air unit at the front. Uh, okay, that's enough from me today. Time for me to sign off. It's very late at night here. Uh, in fact, it's 11.50 at night. Uh, the dogs need their last meal of the day. Um, strange personal piece of information for you guys. My dogs eat four meals a day. Usually dogs only eat two, but my dogs have to eat four because of an issue with like crystallization if they eat two meals a day. Uh, so, so they have to eat late at uh, 11.50 at night, their fourth meal of the day, which I'll go and do right now, um, which means I'm going to sign off from this video. Thank you guys for checking out my content, and I'll do what I do at the end of every single video, which is say, I do this every single day. So that means that you are guaranteed to see me tomorrow.